really, wasn't that an awesome, awesome video? Beautifully done. Oh, yeah. Beautifully done. Good morning. My name is Mark Thornton, and I am here at Mary's request to speak to you about what Special Olympics has done for my son, Parker. I'm a parent, obviously. I'm also on the board of directors. But I speak to you today from the perspective of a parent who has been involved with Special Olympics for many years. What I'm going to say now may surprise you a little bit. Special Olympics is not about sports. It's really about life. Sports is merely the vehicle that helps our athletes learn how to live full, robust, confident, and honorable lives. To appreciate what Special Olympics has done for Parker, let me give you a little background about him. He was born in the back seat of the company car on the way to Boston. We didn't quite make it to the hospital, and I have yet to live that one down. <laughs> um, and everything was fine. He came back home. He was good. And, and, but unfortunately, on day six, he became quite ill. He contracted a viral meningitis, a Coxsackie 3B variant, and he was at Children's Hospital in Boston for five weeks, much of that on life support. Doctors told us unequivocally he would be institutionalized if he lived. The mortality rate for neonates with Coxsackie 3B is about 92 percent. He came home with brain lesions, paralyzed on his left side. He projectile vomited at least once a day. He developed major learning disabilities, and because of that, he was in special education from about nine months to, to 21 years of age. I want to share with you something that is very personal, actually, and I don't think I've ever said this to anybody except my wife, Jocelyn. When I thought about how sick Parker was and the challenges that he would have to confront in his life, I realized that for me, dying was a luxury I just simply could not afford. How could I ever leave my son? Who would care for him? For Parker, his challenges continued as he grew. He began to realize that he was, in fact, different. He didn't have any friends. In fact, through school, he only had one, really. It was just really hard to find a place to fit in. Parker was teased and bullied. And in fact, you ask your athletes at your tables about that. I'm sure they have similar stories. It was so bad at one point we had to pull him out of school and homeschool him. And, and you know, if you ask your athletes, you ask Parker, it was just really hard to find that place where you fit in. And it's hard to fit in because we live in a society that measures the value and worth of an individual based on their productivity and on their image. We have a multi-billion dollar industry that is designed to make us look thinner, be sexier, have more lustrous hair, and have nice fashionable clothes. And we all, all of us, we all work hard to fit in. We all work hard to belong. All of us. Now just imagine, just imagine what it would be like if you had a disability. If you wanted to live a full life, you need to find a place to fit in. Parker loved sports. He was always active. And, and we got him involved with Special Olympics when he was eight years old. And he's been active in it for the most 25 years plus. Sports helped his motor skills, his coordination, and gave him friendships. It was a chance for him to experience things that most people just simply take for granted. He was very successful in many, many sports, and recently was a member of Team New Hampshire's basketball squad that went down to Princeton and brought home the gold for New Hampshire. And I, the teammates here of his, raise your hands, because this is an outstanding group. Yes. An outstanding, uh, an outstanding group of young men and women, truly. But really, it's not about sports. It's just the vehicle, because Special Olympics did other things. It taught him the skills to be a global messenger to be able to speak to audiences, and he has spoken to multiple audiences and large audiences, up to 3,000. He has learned the importance of community involvement. He's been on the board of directors for Special Olympics, as well as two other nonprofits. He's just completed two terms as the athlete representative at, for the United States Leadership Council for Special Olympics North America. Special Olympics has broadened his horizons in ways that we never knew possible. He found a place to fit in. He found a place where he belonged. It's a place that nurtured him and helped him to grow as a young man. 
He learned to believe in himself. And it gave him the confidence to engage life outside of Special Olympics. And this is really what's important. He now works 20 hours per week at a home health care agency. He flies, travels by air independently. He got his driver's license on his birthday last year at 33. He is learning about being independent. Parker will say to you, he, Special Olympics has changed his life. Jossie, my wife Jocelyn and I will say to you that Special Olympics has given him a life to live. When I, when I see the man that Parker has become, I am no longer afraid of dying. I am simply filled with gratitude and humility for the great gift that God has given us in Special Olympics. If you are a fan of courage, then you are already a fan of Special Olympics. If you admire determination, then you already value this organization. If you are impressed by grace under pressure, then you are already a believer of Special Olympics. If you can't help but share in the joy of victory, then come and share our joy. If you believe in building lives in a meaningful way, then you've come to the right place, a place where you fit in. Thank you for being here, and welcome to our family.